hello guys welcome to this channel so in today's tutorial i'll be learning how to draft this underboss corset dress so if this looks like what you would want to learn do not forget to hit on the like and the subscribe button and do well by turning on your notification bell so you can get notified when next we upload a new video this is the part one to this tutorial in our next tutorial we'll be so we'll be learning how to sew this together so guys let's get straight into the video so guys the shoulder measurement that i'll be working with is 14 divided by 2 is 7 and the neck width is 2.5 so from that point i'll go down by one inch and connect to the 2.5 inch to get my shoulder slope okay so next i'm going to place my tape and my shoulder on my shoulder line and i'll be marking the bust point the bust point i'm working with is 9 shoulder to under bust is 12.5 then our shoulder to half length or your yeah, waistline is 15.5 so i'm just going to mark out this line so you all can see our bust point line our under bust and our half length so this is it i'm just labeling it for you to understand also i'm going to go up by 1.5 from the bust points to get my chest line okay so you can actually use divide your bust measurement by 6 plus 1.5 to get your chest line so the measurement i have on my shoulder which is seven i'll mark it on the chest line then connect to get my armhole line from the half length i'll be working with six inches my my hip line is actually eight so i can decide to make it eight or reduce it by six this totally depends on you you can use your hip line but i don't want this other part to be too big if you want it longer you can use the eight inches so i'm going to reduce it by two and mark six inches all the way but at the same time you can use your hip line measurements this totally depends on what you want then from that point this will serve as our hip line then this will serve as my full length the full length of my gown okay on the armhole line i'm just going to measure my armhole line divide it into two and go in by half of an inch then i'm going to divide my round bust measurement what i have is eight and quarter I'll mark it and quarter and I'll go ahead and connect these three lines together using my ruler and my curve. Just go ahead and connect just like you see me doing. So this is our armhole curve. Next thing, I'm just going to determine the height of my the neck. So I'll you can use your chest line, you can use your bust point if you want it lower, but I just want to use my chest line measurement. And the neck width i'll be using three inches so i'm just going to connect from that three inches down to my chest neck okay remember the neck is actually a v neck so this is our neck so next at this on that bust i'll go up by two inches can you see i'll go up by two inches then i'll connect with my curve through to the under bust using my curve this is it i can use I went ahead to use my marker to enhance this line so you all can see and also for better clarity so the next thing on our hip line i'll go up by two inches again then on this other part i'm going to be using five inches but if you're on a bigger size you can use 5.5 okay so i'm just going to mark 5.5 then connect the point from the two inches to that five inches with my curve so that we can have that curved effect can you see so now i'm going to add my side seam allowance which is 1.5 then i'm going to divide my hip measurements by four what i have is 6.5 so i'll mark 6.5 then add 1.5 this dress doesn't need a that there's no need to add that to this dress so we are going to ignore it then on our hip line we are going to divide your hip measurements by four as well you are going to mark then you add 1.5 inch seam allowance then you connect the point from the waistline to the hip line can you see so right now at this point i'll go up by 2.5 i'm just going to mark then connect to, with my curve just like you see me doing can you see this is actually giving so next i'm just going to connect straight from my from my hip line down to the hem of this skirt because we need it 
So I'll go ahead and cut that. Basically, this is the first part to this drafting of this of the front bodies, front part. So just go ahead and cut out. Watch how I am cutting mine so you don't make mistake. So for this part, I'm going to get the midpoint because we are going to be slashing this. We're going to do slash and spread for this because of the gathers. We want to have that curved effect. So I'm going to be dividing this into five. I actually thought of using six inches, slashing it into six parts, but I later changed my mind. When I was labeling it, I labeled this, the first part, I labeled this as one, two, three, four, five, and the last one, six. So I was actually contemplating at this point. So when I was cutting, I just cut through the line and make sure you take note of the point of number three and four. Please take note of that point very well. That point where we have the deep V, deep curve. So can you see I've slashed through five. So I didn't make my pattern to be six. So at this point, I'm also going to get the midpoint of my shoulder and connect because we want to slash this other part as well. Go ahead and slash it until you get to the end, but don't cut through, be careful. So I'll get a new pattern paper and I'm going to place it, then secure it with my just secure it with your masking tape just for it to be in place. Then the wideness of this totally depends on you. I don't want to spread it. I don't want it too big. So I'm just going to spread it by two inch like I have shown you. Then I'll connect. After connecting, I'm just going to be cutting out like so. So this is now the new pattern that I'll be using for this and no longer the old one. So I've gone ahead to draft the back. This is my zipper allowance, the chest line, bust point, half length, hip line and the full length as well. So the next thing, um, my measurement is going to start after the zipper allowance. Divide the bust measurement by four, mark, then you connect to get your armhole line. Also, I'll be adding side seam allowance of 1.5 inches. On our waistline, I'm going to be dividing the waist by four, which is 6.5. I'll add 1.5 inch because there's no need for that. Then I'll go ahead and connect. On the hip line, I'll divide my hip measurement by four. Whatsoever I have, I'll add and add my side seam allowance of 1.5 inch, then connect to the waistline, okay? So from that point, I'm just going to connect straight all the way down. Just what we did at the front. We're just going to repeat the same thing for the back, okay? So guys, on this half line, the waistline, because I'm, I don't want... I want my zip to sit well at the back. I'm going to go in by three quarters of an inch, then connect to the top, just like you see me doing. So we want to eliminate bulginess at the zipper area. So in order to achieve that, we are going to go in by three quarters of an inch or half of an inch, but three quarter is okay for me. Then I'm just going to connect all the way down as well. Also, on this hip line, I'll extend the line to this new zipper line, then go up by two inches like we did for the front. Then at this side, I'll mark five inches as well, then connect with my curve. Basically, we are repeating the same thing we did to the front, okay? Then I'll extend this other line with my straight ruler. I'm just going to enhance it for better clarity. So connect with your straight ruler. And at this other point, I'll be marking 2.5 inches as well. Can you see? Then I'll connect with my curve. Okay. So guys, this is it. I'll just go ahead and determine my neck width, which is 3 inches. The neck depth totally depends on you, but I want a high neck. So I'm going to be marking 1.5 inch. Okay. Then I'm going to enhance this as well i'm just going to mark it out so that you can see it better so guys we are basically through with the drafting we'll go ahead and cut okay please if you are watching this video and you are yet to subscribe to this channel please kindly subscribe okay and do well by giving this video a thumbs up so that youtube can make this video viral so the next thing we are going to splash this as well mark the center line okay connect it all the way down then i'll divide this other part into three like we did for the front then for the other side 
I'll just divide it into two. So that means the front is five and also the back is five. Can you see? So that's what I want. I'm just going to, this is the zipper allowance number one, two, three, four, and five. So I'll go ahead and cut out just like you see me doing, okay? Please subscribe to this channel. Oh, thank you so much, guys. So this is our pattern for the back. Okay, so you can go ahead and label this. This is the back so that you don't mix it up. I've also gone ahead to transfer my pattern to my fabric. This was cut on a fold and I add, I've added half of an inch, half of an inch. Then also when you open it up, this is what it looks like. I've cut both the lining and the actual fabric. Also for this other part, I've gone ahead to transfer. I cut the fabric on fold. I added half of an inch and I've cut both the lining and the actual fabric all the way around i added half of an inch all the way around when you open up this is what it looks like okay so guys the next i've added half of an inch to the back as well can you see so i've also cut the lining piece i have four pieces two lining and two main fabric and i use a crepe material for this also for this other back i've added half of an inch all the way around and i have two pieces two lining and two of the actual fabric okay I've also gone ahead to cut out my sleeve and mine is a little bit longer, okay? So you can go ahead and draft your sleeve and cut out. So for this other part, this will serve as the ruffle and this fabric is actually on fold. So when I measured it, remember it's on fold, then I'm measuring. You need a very, you need a big fabric. I used about three yards of this Ankara fabric just for this ruffle. And when you measure all to the end, I have 59, 59 inches. Can you see? So this is it. It's actually on four. This one is just for the front pattern. No, it's just for the front and not the back. So guys, I'm just going to be placing my pattern. This is the number one, the first one. I'll place it like this from the top, then secure it. You know, this is not actually, the upper part is not straight. So I'll measure from the down part. What I have is five and three quarter. So I'll be marking five and three quarter all the way until I get to the end. So that it will serve as a guide for me to place the remaining fabric. And the length of this ruffle depends on you. You can make it longer, you can make it knee length, or you can make it longer than your knee uh, and below your knee. So you just take your full measurement and subtract your half length to get this the length of your ruffle so that was what i did after i was done marking i don't know if you can actually see this but i've marked it also remember that our pattern is five so i'm going to be dividing 59 inches by five what i have is 11 and three quarter so from this end i'll be marking 11 and three quarter i'll also mark 11 and three quarter at the top as well so that this one will serve as a guide on where to place the next pattern can you see so you always place from that starting line where we just marked okay so you place it from the under not the top so that you can follow up so that's what i'll be doing until i get to the other end i'll place the third one measure 11 and three quarter and i'll place my pattern from the hem also i'll measure 11 and three quarter all the way from this side and also from the other side, place my pattern number four. And that's what I'll do until I get to the last one, the fifth, the fifth one. Okay. So we want to have that same V effect on the ruffle so that one side will not be longer than the other. So I'm going to connect in from the center to the number two and now to the number three. Can you see I've connected to my number three? So at this number three, remember I asked you to take note of that. That's the point that have that curved part. So I'm going to be measuring from number three to four now. Go ahead and measure. And what I have is 10. Get the midpoint, which is five. Mark the midpoint. Then I'll connect from this point now to that midpoint. Okay. So we want to follow up that curve. We want to have that curved part on our rough foam. So I'm just going to connect from number three to the center and also to the number four. Then I'll go ahead and connect like so. So guys, this is it. I'm, I'm just going to be cutting out 
just go ahead if you cannot see the marker or the chalk just follow through the cutting aspects i think you understand better can you see that curve you can see that that part that number three four is not straight like the other part okay so when we when we start sewing i think you understand better so this is it i'll go ahead and use this method to cut the back use this method also to cut the back i'll do that and show you so guys can you see i'm just trying to see if this will really come out but i i felt we'll not see the effect until we start sewing so i've gone ahead to cut the back as well so in the next class we'll be learning how to sew this together see you guys in my next tutorial